Steel here from Fashion Steel NYC and welcome back to my channel and another vlog. Make sure to give your girl a thumbs up and subscribe if you love fashion, beauty, lifestyle, and travel videos. So today we are going to go to Sawgrass Mills to do some shopping at the luxury outlets. It's been a really long time, maybe like a year since I've been to Sawgrass Mills. Um, and New York Fashion Week, Milan Fashion Week, Fashion Month is nearing. It's coming up next month. And so I want to check and see what's new in. I also know that Ferragamo, which is one of my favorite brands right now, just opened up a new outlet that opened today at Sawgrass Mills. So we want to be the first to see what they have. So I got myself together. I did my usual face wearing my favorite Dior rose glow blush in the color cherry it's so good on the lip i have my favorite covergirl yummy gloss these little earrings are so cute these are from local european you would have seen these in a previous vlog i'm also wearing my local european black midi cargo skirt and a little zara top and my fendi slides this is going to be my shopping look for today. It's fairly hot, but it looks like it's going to rain. And I just want to be comfortable. You guys do know that Sawgrass Mills is like indoor and outdoor. So I'm going to carry my new in Fendi shopper bag. This is a vintage Fendi Zuka print shopper. Um, I believe I found a few online. Most of them are under $1,000. So I'll link a few down below if I can find them. But this will be great because if I buy anything, I can pop it in here. I can pop an umbrella in here and just all the things that I need. Let's pick a fragrance and then let's head to Sawgrass Mills. Okay, for the fragrance, this is my favorite, my new favorite fragrance, you guys. It's the Maison Francis Kirk de Jean Aqua Media cologne forte this is new it just came out this year it has notes of like citrus it's kind of minty and fresh but it does have an undertone of like wood which i love i don't know it's just so fresh and clean and i love it mm. get it it's good shout out to the mfk team who sent this to me by the way all right let's pack our bag we're gonna take this Christian Dior Le Bomb Lotion because trying on clothes, I'm bound to get ashy. So we're just gonna pop this. By the way, this stuff is really good. It is moisturizing right in here. Let's take my Chanel Compact. I'm gonna grab my lip gloss because I'm probably gonna eat while I'm out there too. Let me show you the full look and we're out of here. Oh wait, we need a sunglass just in case. I have been wanting to wear a pair that I just got in from Gucci. I got these at the Outnet and they were on sale. And I think they go perfectly with these local European earrings. Super cute. That's going to be the look. I'm going to call an alto. It's been a minute since I rode an alto. Well, not really. I was just in one the last vlog. But I have some credits. So, boop. Um, I think I still do have a code with them. It should be Monroe 20 for $20 off your first two rides with Alto. Um, yeah, let's call them because they take a little while to come and we'll head out. And while I'm riding up, I have some work I need to do from Michael Kors. I need to post some stories for them today. So while we're driving up to Sawgrass Mills, which is probably like a little 40 minute ride from Miami Beach where I live, um, we'll get some work done. All right, guys, we made it to Sawgrass Mills. It took about an hour to get here, and it's a pretty dreary day. Um, so the first place I'm going to head into is Nima Marcus Last Call, and then I'm just going to make my way around to the outlets, Ferragamo, Saint Laurent, all the things. So I'll try and get some video for you guys. I don't know how they will be with my camera, so I might have to switch to my phone. But we'll see. Let's go into Neiman Marcus. Last call.
okay neiman's is great so many great shoes lots of like literally everything this is what i have to try on a little attico cavalli i have some rick owens some brandon maxwell and a little bit of mcqueen so we'll see if any of these work <laughs> all right guys just leaving neiman marcus last call it's good they have some good stuff i tried on a few things but nothing really worked for the vibe i'm going for uh is the ferragamo store not open yet it's not open yet you guys i'm looking in it right now crap so this is the new Ferragamo store at Sawgrass Mills. They're still setting up, unfortunately, but right next door is Bottega. So we're gonna go on Bottega, but dang, I wish Ferragamo was open. They were on my butt, like white on rice in Bottega. Like the lady literally followed me around the whole store. So I couldn't get much video. I tried on a pair of sunglasses. They have a lot of the mules, all of the colorful bright ones, but no like neutrals. So yeah, if you're looking for shoes, they have all of the Lido mules, all of the stretch mules. Now I'm heading into sex. really happy I came I've been searching for this hoodie forever it sold out so quick and I found it here for such a good price um, I cannot film in this store like it's too compact but I just got some tops all of these are men's because I'm in the mood for like t-shirts and things but yeah mainly here for this and i wanted it oversized so this is perfect i'm so happy i can cry I ended up walking to the store and even though it's overcast it's hot like I'm sweating um so I ended up getting this hoodie from Saint Laurent this is really the only reason I went to Sawgrass Mills because I've been looking for this hoodie everywhere it's past season and it's men's and I'm so glad that I found it at Sawgrass Mills for the cheapest price even the prices I was seeing it online before it sold out I got it cheaper so it's just a little like faded red hoodie with Saint Laurent Paris 1971 on the front um, and it doesn't look come on like like there we go it doesn't look like much but I have plans for this hoodie like you guys know when I do my little chill looks this is gonna come in handy 
so yeah that's all i ended up getting they have they haven't opened the ferragamo yet the website said that it was opening today but when i walked by they were still like closed and putting things on the shelves so maybe i'll go back and like I don't know two weeks or so and see what it's looking like in there because that's really um another place i wanted to go in the bottega had a lot of footwear um a few bags and sunglasses um all of the footwear is past season they had a lot of mules a lot of the stretch mules and the lido mules and like really the the styles that weren't very popular in very bright colors like neon orange blue pink um yeah i ended up going into gucci they didn't have much um definitely neiman marcus last call was like the best place that i went in everything is super on sale um but there was just nothing that caught my eye and i wanted to go to the luxury department stores i mean the luxury outlet stores first to spend my money there before going back to neiman marcus so the only thing I bought was that sweatshirt and then I ended up going to this Italian restaurant that I love out there for lunch. And I got this like pasta with seafood. It's so good and like a white wine sauce with shrimp and then crab stuffed shrimp. Girl, delicious, okay? And I tore that bread up too, they had some bread. So yeah, it took me like an hour to get there and an hour to get back because I got stuck in traffic. Um, so now I have to do a post on Instagram for St. Kitts Tourism. Um, we work together for them to provide me with a trip there and I have some deliverables for them. So I need to post an Instagram post, a carousel post for them today. So I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to shower because I feel disgusting. Um, and then we'll do a little get ready with me. I'll show you guys my updated makeup routine. Um, tonight we are going to Sexy Fish, one of my favorite restaurants. Um, I think they're launching like a new tequila maybe and they're having like a little tasting with bites and such. And my girl Rhea, Michelle invited me to come tonight. So that's the plan for tonight. I'll check back in when we are ready to do a little like new not even really new but i'll show you guys some new products and go through my makeup routine and we'll also chat a bit about my little glow up well not even a glow up but like how i went from one career to this career and how you know i got here because a lot of you have had a lot of questions about that especially if you're new here all right guys so i will check back in soon if you're enjoying the video thus far I'm trying to get the light right. I don't know what's going on with this camera. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and click the notification bell. I'll check back in momentarily for you, a few hours for me. All right, y'all. So hopefully the light is good enough and the echo is not too much in here. Um, but let's get into it. I'm gonna start with my hair. Sorry about the echo in here. Um, not much in this bathroom, but I showered, got myself together, put on this ring light because it's dark in here. We're going to start with my hair. I'm going to use the Rucker Roots Daily Leave-In just to refresh my scalp. We will do a full get ready with me. This smells amazing, by the way. It has, um, sunflower seed oil, biotin, castor oil, uh, and it just smells so good. Ginger, turnip, and carrot. I love this stuff and my scalp loves it too. I also have the heat protectant. This is really good for refreshing your braids. Um, if you have your hair braided under a wig, it's so good and it smells good too. All right, so my scalp is nice and refreshed. I like to lay my baby hairs before I do my makeup. Don't ask me why. I just do. While this settles in, I'm gonna put my hair up okay and we're gonna start with my baby hairs now you guys know i love using the gummy professional styling wax extra hold i get this from amazon and uh Aaliyah's face put me onto this and it is so good like you guys your baby hairs will not move and i love this because like i have like 4c hair and my baby hairs don't like to stay down. They like to be up. Okay, they like to be boisterous. 
but like look how that just laid it so i'm just gonna take my little baby hair brush and do a couple of swoops and it's not too oily and it doesn't just disappear after a few hours which is what a lot of i mean y'all see the swoops they are swooping i will link this down below because it does work and honestly it's maybe like the top i would say it's the number one <laughs> for the 4c girls with curly non um perm baby hairs this works and it will last and then i just take a little bit of toilet paper and kind of dab off the excess it also smells really good and it's not much excess you can see like not a lot comes off i just don't want my makeup getting caught in any of it a lot of you should say oh i should probably do this after my makeup but I don't like putting the makeup on my face and then mixing that with the, it's not a good look, trust me. For me, it works to do my baby hairs first. Okay, now that we've done that, we're gonna lay a base on my face, which is my favorite at the moment, Super Food Air Whip Moisture Cream, Kale and Spinach from Youth to the People. This has hyaluronic acid in it, and it's just so light and airy that it just works really well under makeup. And I also like to put this on my face after I cleanse my face in the morning and I'm doing a makeup free day. I put this on my face and on my neck and it just, I mean, my skin feels like a newborn baby, like for real, for real. It's giving newborn, okay? It's giving fresh out the womb. All right, so now we're gonna get started with my makeup routine. I have to be quick because I'm already running late, by the way. Skims house dress, the fits everybody, tube dress, super comfortable. I love it, it's great, it's worth the money to get it. Now, we're gonna start with my Beauty Counter uh, Tinted SPF. This is not foundation, this is Tinted SPF, I mean this is Tinted Moisturizer with sunscreen. It has SPF 20 in it. I'm gonna put a little bit of this on a brush I either use color number six or color number seven. They're both fairly close. And I mean, this is tinted moisturizer. It's not gonna be your skin tone. It's just really gonna kind of melt into whatever color your skin is. So this one is six, which is the lighter color. Cause right now I'm a little light. I don't know why. I just came from the islands. I hope y'all watch my St. Kitts vlog, but I'm looking a little bright lately. So we're gonna go with the six. Again, it doesn't matter. It's just gonna melt into my skin anyway and just make my skin look more moisturized and dewy. And I don't even really need a lot because my skin has been skinning lately. I'm telling y'all, the ordinary products, especially the niacinamide, the hyaluronic acid, and then I'm using retinol, it has really been working for me. If you watch my staycation vlog where I stayed at uh, the Miami edition, I did my full skincare routine. So go watch that video if you wanna know what your girl has been doing to her skin. But yeah, I love Beauty Counter because this foundation is clean. And I, honestly, I think that's a big part of why my skin is looking so much better because I'm putting less chemical things as a base on my face. So this is the aftermath. It doesn't have a lot of coverage. It's a little bit buildable, but again, it's just a, um, a tinted moisturizer. So you can still see a little of my hyperpigmentation and such, which is fine for me because when I do my makeup, I like looking like myself. Now, let's get into everybody's question. Is there still room for new influencers? Um, a lot of people um, who are new to my page have been sending me questions and I can tell that they're new from the questions that they ask about like what advice I have for up and coming influencers. Do I think the field is saturated? Um, what, at what point did I start making money? How am I able to make money? How do I live off of campaigns and being a full-time content creator? So I'm gonna break it down. There are a few different ways that I make money as a content creator. Number one, 
YouTube. I get paid from YouTube from the AdSense. So when you guys are watching my videos, sometimes an ad might pop up. Um, and if you watch it for more than a second, I get like a couple of pennies. <laughs> okay. And that's how it works. I get paid from Google, i.e. YouTube AdSense, um, just from making these videos and placing ads in them. Um, I'm not able to choose the ads. A lot of people are like, oh, I saw, you know, an ad that was kind of weird on your video. I don't get to choose the ads. So I don't choose the ads, um, but I get, can click on a button so that I have ads, so that I make money from that. And I make pretty good money from every video. Um, and then there are collaborations with brands. And what that means is a brand will come to me or a um, PR agency that represents a brand or an influencer agency that works with brands uh, to find influencers. Uh, they'll ask me to do something. Hey, can you wear uh, this new makeup for a reel? We'll pay you X, Y, Z. Can you do some stories for our brand with the link? We'll pay you X, Y, Z. Can you integrate uh, a, in a YouTube video and do a haul of our products? We'll pay you X, Y, Z. So on top of just YouTube, I make money from brands doing collaborations with ads on Instagram, ads on YouTube, ads on TikTok, um, writing blog posts for brands. And yeah, sometimes I just create the content for a brand and I don't even have to post it. They pay me for that too. I just give it to them or I give the rights to them and they're able to post it on their own, own channels. So brand collabs is another way. That's a major way. And then the third way is affiliate marketing, which means I work with different affiliate programs so that I can pull links of the things I'm already wearing and I can link it for you guys either on Instagram in a swipe up or a click link on a, a YouTube description box in a TikTok <laughs> description. And so anytime you click that link, and you end up buying something, I get a commission, like I'm a sales associate, like a sales associate at a store gets a commission. I get a commission when someone buys something for from my link. Again, it's not a lot. It's a couple of, sometimes it's literally like five cents. But I mean, it adds up if, you know, a lot of people are buying different things from links. So that's the third major way that I make money as a content creator. And then I have my own things that I do like my clothing line with something by Sanji that makes money as well. Um, when I used to sell my products and I had a store with ebooks and things like that, I made money from that as well. So those are the, kind of just the ways that make money and I sustain my sustain myself and sustain my lifestyle because I do get a lot of well, how are you able to afford this and how do you live off of that and yeah, it's very possible when you have multiple streams. It's not just one way to make money as a content creator. Now we're going in with the Lara Mercier Translucent Medium Deep Powder. This is my favorite because it's blurring. Y'all are about to watch my pores disappear. You see the difference? There's not really nothing over here. So yeah, and a lot of people are like, oh, you have this glow. It's this too. I don't know. It's kind of like a, it's almost orange to be honest, but it is translucent and it just kind of pulls whatever color is underneath out. And so if you like a poreless kind of matte finish, this works great. And I love putting this on top of the um, skin tint because that is more dewy. And this kind of just takes the dew down a little bit. And then when they mix after like, I don't know, 30 minutes to an hour, it's just a beautiful radiant foundation. And this is my favorite. Yeah, this one is the Ultra Blur Translucent Medium Deep Powder from Laura Mercier. And it, this one usually works for any brown skin tone. So yeah, I believe I went full time content creator influencer blogger in 2019 i left my job i did a whole video about that y'all gotta go back and watch it now um and before i left my job i had already been blogging for like eight years so i think i had a big advantage in that way because over those eight years i had already built up an audience 
one that started on an actual blog. This is back when people actually went to websites, looked at people's pictures, read people's words. This is before Instagram. Um, and then once Instagram came along, I kind of transitioned into doing both my blog as well as Instagram. And a lot of my audience that read my blog, like faithful readers came over to Instagram and started looking at my um, content there. And then, yeah, I built a really good solid core of support for many, 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 many years. And also it helped me out a great deal that I was based in New York, that a lot of the PR agencies were in New York. And when I was kind of coming up in the age of bloggers, like being an OG blogger, an original <laughs> blogger, um, that I was exposed to those people already. And so I was kind of known I'm pretty well known in New York and that's a big deal when um, a lot of the PR agencies kind of came along and influencer agencies started popping up. They were all popping off mainly in New York and so the fact that I was there and I had already had this huge audience definitely helped me out a ton. Um, now, there are new influencers popping up every day especially with TikTok it's so easy to just like blow up. And immediately a lot of um, content creators are like, okay, I have this huge following. Why am I not getting partnerships? Why are people not reaching out? Even on Instagram with reels being pushed for a few years, those girlies who got on and started cranking out reels, 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 and were gaining huge following super quick um, would come to me and be like, yo, I, I have the numbers. Why? are the brands not coming to me like people who have surpassed me um, in numbers as far as like Instagram and TikTok as well they're like hey like why aren't the brands coming and I think that's what's different in today's landscape I think people who kind of started off as bloggers and had to learn that skill set and then transition into being an influencer kind of have it a little bit easier as far as working with brands because simply because we've just been around longer so we know the ins and outs and those brands already know like our work and what we're capable of but when you're when you grow so quick and I just think it just takes time for the brands to see you even if you have a huge following if you don't have a great deal of work that you've done um, it can kind of put you at a disadvantage. So to people who are growing really quickly, especially on TikTok and Instagram, and you're discouraged because you don't feel like you're getting, you have the numbers, but you don't feel like brands are reaching out to you. You need to really hone in on creating the content um, that you won't want brands to know you for. So if you're a fashion girly, hone in on being educational with your fashion content like sometimes you just can't come on and just get dressed like sometimes that's not enough people need to see your personality people need to know that you can put on this outfit but not only can you put this outfit on you can sell the outfit people go and buy that outfit because they saw you with it on and you have to have like evidence to back that up you have to have um a return on your investment for those brands so yeah, I think the market is getting a little saturated. I actually think the way that influencers are being seen or are coming about is, I don't think it's as important or as prevalent anymore. I think almost everybody is an influencer at this point. If you got a TikTok, you're an influencer. <laughs> you know, and so the landscape is gonna kind of change on those who can make it full time versus those who do it for fun. Um, and I'm in it for the long haul, so I need to make money off of this. <laughs> All right, guys, we're gonna go in with the little Laura Mercier um, Ultra Long Wear Concealer Flawless Fusion and Color 4N. Sometimes I use Color 4W, and we're just gonna contour, I mean, not contour, we're gonna conceal just a bit and I have this super cute Dior concealer brush that I got 
when I did a, one of my last orders from Dior as a Dior Beauty Ambassador. By the way, I'm back being a Dior Beauty Ambassador. Shout out to us. Shout out to us. And by this, I mean you and me. We are still a Dior Beauty Ambassador for the month of August. Yes, August and September. Period. So... You can use my code MONROE23, all capital letters, for a free gift with purchase over $125 at Dior Beauty with my code MONROE23. And I'll put a few of my favorites down below for you guys. But this is a Dior concealer brush. And this is kind of how I do my concealer. Sometimes I pop a little bit on the chin. Okay. There we go. I'm going to use this little pad actually that one looks like it's been through some things this one looks like it's been through some things too let me get another one i have a bunch of them that i ordered from amazon they're really cool you just slip your fingers in there and it's just like a little puffy pad we're gonna go in with the lara mercier translucent powder in white to set my concealer but yeah, that's why I always tell people, don't get into it for the money. Even though it seems like more and more people are really very interested in the money. And I understand that because there is so much money in the influencer. It's a billion dollar industry, which is nuts. And everybody wants a piece of that pie. And you feel like if you're doing it and you already have a good audience, that why can't you do it and make money? But honestly, at this point, it's just like everybody can't do it. Everybody can't be an influencer. We need like a few people being doctors and, and lawyers and other types of things to keep the economy going. <laughs> but I mean, I understand wanting to be a part of it. But the money can't be everything because sometimes the money don't come. And it's just simple as that. And you can see examples of that um, from people who have like gotten their um followers very quick and at, are still unable to monetize their platforms i mean it happens every day with you know people going viral and such so that just really mattified my under eye mm. i'm out here benjamin but now i'm aging backwards okay we are going to do my brows which is usually what i do next um, I usually use a Sephora brow pencil, but I don't think I got one. So let's see what I got. So after I left my job, I just dived headfirst into content creation and it, business was booming and continues to boom. And I'm very much enjoying uh, being a full time content creator. But for many, 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 many years, I did both. Okay, I had my full-time job as a doctor of physical therapy. I was director of a whole clinic working 50 hours a week, seeing sometimes 60 patients a week. I would come home at night, do my blog posts, edit my photos. On the weekends, I would batch shoot and post on Instagram throughout the week on my lunch breaks. Y'all, I was grinding for eight years. So what seems to you that like I might be, I've made it, I've made it to the pinnacle, I'm, I'm doing it, I'm, it took me so many years to get here. I just want you, I want you guys not to forget that it's, it's a marathon. It's a marathon. The race is a marathon. It takes time and it takes patience and just because, um, you grow quick or you have the numbers and you have a lot of numbers that just it that doesn't equate to the brands like I've been doing this for so long and I still haven't worked with some of the biggest brands in the world and I've been doing this for 10 plus years so I don't feel like my journey is done yet either or that I've like reached the pinnacle of my career as a content creator. I'm using the Sephora brow pencil, even though I have like barely anything left in these. So I'm just gonna outline my brows and I have been using the Ordinary Brow Serum 
to grow and thicken my brows. I've also been using it on my eyelashes, but more on my brows, just because I don't wanna have to fill them in so much. And it has been working really good. I'll be sure to link the Ordinary Brow Serum down below. Okay, we're gonna tap into this Anastasia Beverly Hills pencil because, girl, there is nothing left in my Sephora brow pencil in granite. This is also the Anastasia um, eye pencil in the same color, granite. I wonder why brands always like use the same names of products. So you can see I'm just lightly outlining the bottom and then I'm literally just going in with upstrokes and just filling it in just a, just a tad. That's it. They're sisters, not twins. They don't have to be perfect. I'm gonna go in with a little bit more of Laura Mercier Longwear Concealer, this time in color 4W, which is a little more brown, just to clean them up a bit. And I only put just a tiny amount, like I don't need them to look super duper sharp. I actually like when they look kind of bushy and unkempt. I'm gonna go in with this little Artiste brush, which I love these Artiste precision brushes and just outline a bit. I don't even really go into the brow. This is really just to highlight. Can you see? Oh yeah, you can see. This is just to highlight that there was something done to these brows. See, it looks better already. All right, so the brows are cleaned up. Where is my little, oh, here we go. I just wanna blend this in a little bit cause now this is looking nuts, but it's gonna come together. It's going to come together, I promise you. Okay, next we're gonna do my wing i'm gonna do just the tiniest wing every time i tell myself I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a tiny wing the wing ends up looking crazy because you know you mess up and then you try to go in and fix it and then it just it looks even worse we're going in with dior dior being the ambassador boop, boop, boop. dior show on stage liner liquid proof liquid eyeliner in black yeah love this stuff now I hate doing this on camera because I feel like I can just never get it right. So actually, maybe I'll just face the actual mirror. Oh my God, I, that works so well under pressure. So literally I do a little line from the very crook of my bottom lash going up towards the end of my brow. So it's not a straight line, but sometimes I do do a straight line and get like a more walk like an Egyptian type of look. But that's not what we're going for tonight. Real, we really don't even know what we're going for tonight. I don't even know what I'm wearing yet. But it's sexy fish, so I gotta be on my worst behavior in the best way. So there we go. I just do a little line and then I just kind of connect it. Hopefully you guys are seeing this because I'm doing it in the mirror. You see it. And then I go up and I just do a pretty thin line. Well, that one wasn't so thin. And I go all the way to where my eyelashes start. I don't know why it was so hard for me to just say start just now. I'm gonna fill this in a tiny, tiny, not too big, Monroe. We said we're doing dainty, small. But this is such a good precision brush that you get exactly what you want. So there is one. I'm gonna do the other one off camera cause y'all making me nervous. Little cat eye done. We did a tiny one and I stuck to my guns and I did a tiny one. Now we're gonna go in with Laura Mercier. This is their Tuxedo Caviar Eyeliner Pencil. I just started using this and it's amazing. Like it goes on so creamy and so black and it stays on so well like y'all see the vibes and then i just go in a little bit also in the crevice to kind of connect to my liquid liner so i like my whole eye to be lined 
because it does give you like a beautiful shape but this is definitely like my new favorite eyeliner for sure and it comes in a few different colors so definitely check it out La Mercier we're gonna go in with a little eyeshadow this is the Dior um, Ekrin Couture palette it is really nice look at these colors um I'm thinking I want to do this one I actually wore this one earlier today and it's very subtle but you know we're going out tonight so I'm trying to do it big we're gonna do a base of red in the middle just powder that right all over the lid I love how like a red looks on my eye which is why I wear it a lot and the pigment is very good on this for some reason my eyelashes like to flip the other way and be inside my eye um so I have to fix that because this eye it's about five lashes that have flipped they want to be on the inside and I told him, look, this is, it's not where you belong. You need to stay out. I don't know if anyone else has really curly eyelashes, but mine be flipping and doing all kinds of crazy stuff they're not supposed to do. So yeah, ooh, that looks pretty. I like it. It is something. Here for it. Um. There's a little shimmery, there's a golden one and a shimmery one. I kind of want to do a little bit of shimmer. Or do I want to do gold? Let's do shimmer. And I'm just going to do this with my finger and gently go into the corners of my eye just to give it, you know, a little zhuzh. I'll put too much on this one. Got to even it out. I mean, it did a little something. I used to do that all the time and then people told me to stop doing it. And I changed the way I did my makeup. I kind of feel like that's all I want to do, but let me see what this do. So I'm going in with the gold just across. I mean, it created a little bit of depth, I guess. I will link this palette down below. It's one of my favorites from Dior. All right, that's enough for the eyes because I don't really like doing the most. I like to do the least. Now, we're going to go in with Dior Eyeshadow. Is this the one I want? I mean, uh, mascara. I think this is the one I want to use. Come on, lashes. And this is Dior Show Iconic Over Curl. And a lot of people ask why I don't wear false lashes. And it's just, I'm allergic to the glue. And then... Some people pointed out I can try magnetic ones. And my eyes are just sensitive. I just don't like them. So that's the reason why I don't wear them. I just I just don't like them. For me. Like they look great on other people. And if I could wear them, I probably wouldn't. Because my eyelashes are so just finicky. If I put anything on them other than mascara, they're just like, girl, we about to make your eyes water all night. And then I can't enjoy myself. Just that there now on the bottom lashes I only use their real benefit cosmetics because it has the best little bulb there that will just literally grab your tiny lashes and make them look like bambies all right so there we go the eyes are done I've linked everything down below we're gonna contour with LIS list uh this is the no limits strength contour stick and i'm pretty sure this is clean um before i was using a bunch of other stuff that was breaking out my my uh cheeks like crazy since i've started using this i don't break out on my cheeks anymore I just need a few dabs and this is what gives me like that glow that island glow, like girl, you've been in the sun, you've been getting your vitamin D. It's good, I love this stuff. And it's so creamy and it just melts into whatever kind of makeup you use. I'm gonna go in with this contour brush. We're going in an upstroke. And you can see the contrast, it's stark, but don't worry. 
I'm gonna blend it. We are, we're blending, we are blending. We're coming into the hairline, coming around the forehead. Okay, I've blended into the sun, but I probably am gonna blend some more as well. Uh, I'm gonna go in with my blush, the Dior Rose Glow in the color Cherry. It's like a beautiful, like, reddish orange and it's just stunning this is my favorite blush and I'm so glad I kind of stepped out of my comfort zone with blush colors because I didn't think that something like this would work for my skin and it is my absolute favorite it's just so pretty and it definitely gives me like a little island glow the glow is there. And I I, I wear a lot of blush, y'all. Like I need a lot. Like I like a, I like a lot. And I just put that right above the contour. In between the contour and the concealer. You know, just subtle. You see it. So pretty. And I hope this light is working for you guys because I never use uh a ring light really but it's so dark in here and I really want you guys to see the look I'm just blending yeah okay um probably gonna wear my hair down today to finish off the look we are going to do my favorite lip combo which right now is makeup by Mario Daniela it's like kind of pinky kind of brownie you'll see I literally just put it here and here that's it so good and then I go in of course with my favorite gloss at the moment am I gonna wear gloss tonight or am I gonna wear lipstick whatever we've already started the gloss look covergirl yummy gloss in the color lavender mm, I love this stuff and it's so affordable and I'm pretty sure it's clean and you get this yeah it's vegan you get the same glossy beautiful look and it comes in a ton of different colors but this one is just like my favorite because it reminds me of Riri a little bit um from Fenty Beauty and that's the that's it that's the look um do I want to do I don't even feel like I need like a glowy type of bronzer but whatever let's do one for for fun We'll go in with the Fenty Beauty uh, Kilowatt. I like to use the matte one. A little bit under my eye, under my brow. To give a little bit of a contrast. And usually I'll pop some of this on my nose, but I just remembered that I didn't contour my nose. So we're gonna go in with uh, Makeup by Mario in Dark. This is the Soft Sculpt Shaping Stick. And I'm just going to take my tiny little brush. If I can find her. It's like a tiny flat brush. And I just dip it right in. A little groove. And I don't do too much of a contour. And then any excess, I usually go in with my little powder puff just clean it up a little bit okay that's the full look the full makeup look i've linked everything down below for you guys um let's pick out an outfit of fragrance get ready and we'll finish talking all right guys so the question a lot of people had is is the market like too saturated to become a content creator or an influencer and to that i say no um there's always an audience for everyone. But now I do believe that it is harder to become a full-time content creator and influencer because the market for that is very tedious. <laughs> and getting uh, 
to know the PR and things, to getting representation, if that's the route you choose to go. Um, and it's just, it's just harder to be a full-time content creator these days. And it just takes some time to do it because the market for people who are full-time doing this, they're doing it full-time because they're doing it well. Um, and brands are gonna keep coming back to those people because they are um, getting the return on their investment. They're creating beautiful, stunning, engaging content. They are selling. They are getting the name out for those brands. Um, and not everybody can do that, even if you have a huge audience. So I think, yeah, anyone can be a content creator. Anyone can be an influencer. It's very, very fun. Um, but I just don't think there's a huge market anymore for full-time content creators and do with that what you will. Um, my word is not everything. It's just kind of what I've been seeing lately. Um, because I do have a few people in my circle who have grown ex exponentially and these are people who are not represented or anything um but are just wondering why the brands haven't come to them yet or why they're not getting paid for you know deliverables and things that brands want yet and i just think because brands have already kind of allocated those to you know the people they've been working with um and it's really kind of hard to break into some of these spaces, spaces especially the luxury space. Um, also, everyone wants to be a fashion girly. Let me tell y'all, fashion, there's no money. <laughs> there's no money in fashion, okay? If you want, if you're about money, be a beauty girly because the beauty brands has have the coins. Um, be a lifestyle girly because the spirits brands and you know the tar the Targets and the WalMarts, they're the ones with the coin. Um, it's very rare that luxury, the luxury space, or even the fashion space period has money. So I just wanna let y'all know, that's, that's tea. Um, let's pick an outfit. Uh, I think I'm gonna wear my uh, Jean-Paul Gaultier dress. I don't think I've actually ever like seriously worn it out in public, only for a photo, so let's grab that. So tonight we're going to wear this super cool Jean-Paul Gaultier White Project collaboration dress. Um, I think I have worn this once before and if so I'll pop up a few pictures from my Instagram. Um, but yeah, we're going to wear this. This is still available and I'm pretty sure it's currently on sale y'all. So I'll link it down below. Please size down. Like I'm a medium and I got a small in this and even the small is kind of big like if I wanted it to be more form fitting I should have got an extra small just know these dresses run very generously and you could probably size down a full size so let's get dressed I'll check back in when we pick a fragrance a shoe a bag and then we're gonna head to sexy fish love this dress for the shoes we're gonna go with my denim Tom Ford sandals although the floors in sexy fish are so slippery i'm a little scared to wear these but we gonna hold on for dear life with our toes y'all grip with the toes for the earrings we're gonna wear my inspired by drop earrings from amazon these are the dupes in gold i'll link them down below all right, and for tonight's fragrance, again, we're gonna wear my favorite, Maison Francis Kirk Dijon Aqua Media. I just love this. And I can't get enough. I'm in love, I'm obsessed, and I don't even feel guilty about it. I don't. Tonight's bag, ooh, I think I got something in my eye. Let's see, the colors in this dress. Um, should we just do the Chanelica and call it a day? But like, I don't like taking this bag around food. <laughs> um, I do have my Brandon Blackwood denim bag that I haven't worn in a while. So we're gonna go with this one. This is my Brandon Blackwood denim bag. I love this bag fits with like the denim theme and that's the look for the evening let's go to sexy fish
Oh, but before we go, that's pretty much everything I have to say about content creation. And honestly, one of the reasons why I think I've done so well in this field is because simply because how long I've been doing it, how many connections I have with PR and brands, and also my consistency. I never stopped. That's pretty much it. I just kept going. I kept writing blog posts. I kept posting on Instagram. I kept putting out videos twice a week. Um, and I just didn't give up. And that's really what it takes. It takes passion and it takes heart to keep doing this. Um, because if you're not doing it out of passion and you're like waiting for money, sometimes the money don't come. Like I'm just going to be 1000% with you. Um, and everybody can't do this. It's a very, very fun job. It's also a lot of work. It takes a lot of discipline. Um, and it takes a lot of hustle because if you're not hustling, you not don't really know where your next paycheck is going to come from. Um, you have to be very good with money. Um, you have to have a business mindset and think ahead about the future, about how the content you're putting out now is going to affect your future and things of that nature. And it's not for the faint of heart. Um, there's so much good that has come out of this for me, like the people I've met and the friendships I've made and just the really cool things I've done that I never thought I could ever do. Um, God has really, really blessed me and I'm just really grateful and thankful that I listened <laughs> and I took a chance on myself and I, I listened to the voice inside of me and I had a push from God to do this. So I'm just very thankful for everybody and for all of their support and I hope that this somehow helps. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, guys, hopefully that was helpful. If you have any other influencer-ish questions or just transitioning from one career to the other, drop it down below. I do believe that my previous job definitely prepared me for this job. I was a manager, um, not even a manager. I, I ran a whole clinic. I dealt with patients. I had employees, so... Being a boss is not new to me, um, but everybody isn't cut out for it. And again, there is quite a bit of negativity that comes with working in social media. Um, a lot of people want to be in business. They don't have any business trying to be in. Um, there's a lot of hate, hate comments. Uh, but even all of those bad things could never even come close to the good things and the blessings that have come out of just putting myself out there for the world to see and just living my truth and living my life just in front of a camera. All right, let's go to dinner. We need a drink, we need a cocktail. That was too serious, we need a cocktail.